13,000 pesos phone from Samsung Galaxy A22 5G. At meron naman tayo dito 11,000 pesos phone from Infinix. Infinix Zero 5G now. Yes, that's right. Mas mura to kaysa dito. And in this video, gusto kong patunayan sa inyo na meron mga brands talaga na nag-overprice ng kanilang products. Hmm, I'm looking at you. Guys, important lagi na malaman nyo kung anong mga brands na okay. No? Kasi may mga brands na nag-offer na sobrang sulit for the price. At meron naman yung talagang overpriced, no? Sayang, na for the price, you can actually get more from it, no? Mahirap kasi guys na hindi nyo alam kung ano yung mga dapat bilhin na phones. Sayang, sayang yung pera nyo, pinaghirapan nyo yan. Dapat malaman nyo kung ano talaga yung pinaka-okay for the money. That's why in this video, iko-compare natin ang mid-range phone ni Samsung na si Samsung Galaxy A22 5G versus ang mid-range phone ni Infinix na si Infinix Zero 5G. Now, guys, lamang ang may alam. Kaya without further ado, let the comparison begin. It's Vince, and you're watching Unbox Diaries. Okay, so first of all, no, 13,990 to. At ito naman ay 11,990. 2,000 pesos yung difference nila. Para sila may 5G na. Para sila mid-range phones. Kaya lang doon nag-e-enjoy ko nalang similarities. And as you can see, for the price pa lang, no? Yung box pa lang, guys. Tingnan nyo naman yung quality niyan. Halos parang papel na lang. I-compare mo kay Infinix. Napaka-ingrande, no? Napaka-social na kanyang box. May pa-rainbow effect pa. At oo, 8128 na to. Ito naman, 6128 lang. What? Tapos sa itsura naman, Tignan naman guys yung difference. Ito, mukhang mid-range phone. Ito naman, mukhang pang flagship na yung tura niya. Mas elegant, mas social, mas sexy, mas mukhang mamahalin. Ito guys, this is, uh, it looks really plasticky. It looks really thick and chunky. Medyo malaki siya sa kamay. Ito guys, hindi. Just right. It looks like your typical flagship phone. At tignan nyo yung kanilang camera guys, side by side. Ang laki ng lens ni Infinix. Kay Samsung, nako, ang liliit. <laughs> Although para sila 48 MP no, pero maya makita yung difference niya. Pero guys no, for the first time ever on a mid-range phone, may telephoto lens na siya nakasama dito. Well, first time for 2022. Ang telephoto lens kasi isa uh, naka-reserve sa mga flagship lang yan. Ito, ultra wide depth sensor mga ganun. And to be fair no, yung kanya itsura is although flagship yan, plastic lang po yung materials yan, plastic sa likod, plastic sa sides. This is not glass material just like your usual flagship phone. At ganun din si Samsung. Ayun. But of course, looks is subjective basta bigyan niyo kasi bins parang mas okay. It ito, sa akin, yung itsura niya, kaysa dito. Well, it's up to you pa rin kasi nga it's beauty in the eyes of the beholder. It's all subjective yung mga itsura ng mga cellphone. Bahala na kayo kung ano yung gusto nyong itsura. But quality-wise, I can't say mas lamang to or mas lamang to. They feel pretty much the same. Ang advantage lang talaga ni Samsung dito is yung kanyang back ay matte finish. So, very smooth at less fingerprints. Ito naman kasi, glossy siya guys. So, kailangan nyo talaga ng jelly case para hindi siya magkaroon ng mga smudges sa likod. And yes, para silang USB type C port na. Meron pang headphone jack yung dalawa. And mukhang pareha sila guys. Dual na yun na SIM card slot. Plus, meron silang micro SD card slot for expandability. Kaya lang si Infinix ay back to back. Si Samsung naman, isang mahabang SIM tray. Just wanted to let you know. Wala naman impact yun. Pero dito na. Ito na nag-start yung parang pagka-dominant ni Infinix. Ito talaga masabi ko na what was Samsung thinking sa kanilang mga entry level and mid-range phones. Ito na naman, no? Before tayo mag-start, no? Para sa akin, before Samsung phones sa mga entry level at mid-range phones were quite good. Magandang display, napakagandang design. Pero ngayon, parang napapabayan na sila. Kasi right here, no? Sa display pa lang, medyo sablay na yung kanyang display. It is still using the old style water drop notch. Ito po ay 6.6 inch 1080p TFT display na mayroong 90Hz refresh rate. So, very smooth na siya. Kaya lang, guys, TFT lang. TFT kasi yung pinaka hindi okay na type of LCD display. Ang sumunod doon, si IPS LCD. Which is, andito kay Infinix Zero 5G. Siya po ay kumagamit ng 6.78 inch 1080p IPS LCD display na merong 120Hz refresh rate. Samsung 90Hz, Infinix 120Hz. Ibig sabihin, mas smooth si Infinix. Mas smooth siya tingnan, mas solid yung kanyang itsura. And mas maganda sa games to kasi nga alam nyo na guys, si ML at si Call of Duty ay nagsusuport na ng mga high refresh rate gaming. Up to 120 frames per second. Oh my So, yeah, perfect to if you want to maximize the FPS count of your game. So, ito hanggang 90 frames per second lang, unfortunately. Pero ito ah, kailangan nyo makita ito. Ito ang difference ng isang TFT sa IPS display. Chinek ko, sinayad by side ko sila. Ayan. Ano na pansin nyo guys? Mas maputi, mas pure ang white ni Infinix Zero 5G. Si Samsung parang medyo may yellow tint. No? Parang kulang yung pagka-white niya sa akin. And napansin ko rin mas bright ang display ni Infinix. Actually na for the price, Infinix has the brightest, the brightest LCD display on a phone at this price. Actually kahit sa Mobile Legends, mas maganda yung color. At ang resolution ng game dito 
sa Infinix 05G. Kay Samsung para medyo kulang sa color, kulang sa resolution at para medyo lagi yung itsura niya. Bakit ganun? Actually, tinry ko mag-compare side by side when it comes to performance. Ito po. Napansin ko sa performance ni Samsung, medyo yung pagkalag siya ng konti. Siguro dahil sa software to, ang experience sa kanya is medyo malag ng konti. May, may konting pagkabagal yung feeling. Dito kay Infinix talagang smooth na smooth siya. They have mastered their software optimization. Swak na swak din yung kanyang animation. Very smooth tingnan. But yes, alam ko yung gusto nyo malaman. Ang kanyang Antutu benchmark score. Ito na po. Unang una si Samsung Galaxy A22. Ito yung kanyang Antutu benchmark score. Kung hindi nyo alam yan, ito yung nagsasabi kung gano'ng kabilis ang inyong cellphone. Right now, the score is pretty okay. Dimensity 700 po yung gamit niya. MediaTek. Pero si Infinix, Dimensity 900 ang gamit niya. For 2,000 pesos less. At tinan nyo na may score guys 477,000 points Sobrang layo na score nilang dalawa Mas mahal ng 2K Ito guys, nako, ang layo na masyado It is a giant leap from the Samsung A22 Guys, nung nakita ko to Napaisip ako, grabe naman to Parang kawawa naman na bumibili ng ganitong klaseng phone But yes, kailangan ko napatang sa inyo Ang gaming capabilities nilang dalawa Mobile Legends, ito na po Napansin ko, yes, optimized itong si Samsung Galaxy A22. Meron siyang super frame rates sa Mobile Legend, high graphics, and kaya, yun ke, and kay Infinix naman, ayun lang. Na-press ko kasi yung high, hindi na siya bumalik sa ultra graphics. Pero nung binuks ko to, nung in-unbox ko to nouna, naka ultra graphics to. Kasi gusto ko lang makita yung difference nung high sa ultra graphics. Unfortunately, ayun, naka-high graphics na siya dito. Pero, guys, meron siyang ultra frame rates, which means... Kaya niya umabot ng 120 FPS, potentially, pero hindi ko siya matatest dito kasi wala siyang FPS counter, unfortunately. But as you can see, side by side, napakalayo ng itsura nila. Medyo nagpa-frame drops si Samsung dahil sa A22. Hindi ko alam kung bakit ha. And as you can see, mas mababa ang resolution ni Samsung. Ba't ganun? Yes, mas sharp tingnan ang graphics. Mas maganda yung colors ni Infinix Zero. 5G now. And it looks so beautiful and smooth. Feeling ko kahit ultra graphics kayang-kaya niya to guys. Ganun kabilis sa kanyang processor. And guys, itong processing speed ni Infinix ay almost the same as the iPhone 12. That's right. Ganun po siya kabilis. Kaya it's able to power this phone at this frame rate at this resolution in Mobile Legends. Ganun na rin na itsura niya sa Call of Duty. Ito po yung itsura nila sa Call of Duty guys. Nakagulat talaga what this amount of money can get you. No? 11,000 pesos may 5G ka na, 5,000 mAh pa yung battery, well, although 5,000 sila parehas. Kaya lang, ang charging, nako, doble ang charging speed ni Infinix. 33 watts compared to 15 watts ni Samsung. And I'm telling you right now, hindi na acceptable ang 15 watts fast charging ngayong 2022. Gising po tayo, no? Kailangan na po umusad ng fast charging. Don't accept 15 watts and below in 2022. Dapat na sa 30 watts na yan. Least 27 watts, mga ganon. All other Chinese brands ay nalagpasan na to si Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, Realme, mas mabilis pa dito. Kaya medyo nag-alala ko kay Samsung. Hindi na niya ginagalingan like before. Actually, marami akong phones na pwede i-compare dito, no? It's unfair actually to compare the Infinix to the Samsung Galaxy A22 since para sa akin, right now, ito yung number one phone for the price. That's right. Walang ibang phone na mas mabilis dito. Mas maganda yung design. Mas maganda yung specs and everything. For 11K, it has 5G. Lahat po ng competition niya nasa 15, 16,000 pesos. Medyo unbelievable lang talaga ang pwede mong kunin sa ganitong klaseng presyo lang. Now, what about the camera? Cameras, ito na. Siguro naman, mas maganda siya sa camera kasi matagal na si Samsung eh. They have perfected their craft. And here it is. Parehas po silang 48 MP camera. And uh, as you can see, well, ayun lang. Mahirap makita ang difference. Actually, mas sharp tingnan ang picture ni Infinix ulit dito. Bakit ganun? Bakit mas maraming details at mas maganda yung color ni Infinix? At bakit ganun yung watermark ni Samsung masyadong mataas? <laughs> ah, dapat ayusin nyo to Samsung. Ah, masyadong nang gitna to ha. It's crazy. Oh, unfortunately, mas maganda yung HDR pa ni Infinix kaysa kay Samsung. Mas maganda rin yung color and contrast. Mas sharp, mas maraming details ka makakuha sa Infinix camera. I'm not sure kung ano nilagay dito ni Samsung, no? But I just think they placed a pretty average camera dito para lang makatipid sila. And to maximize profits, I'm, I'm sorry, but... It looks that way, ah. Oh, pati selfie, mas sharp si Infinix. Ah, what is happening here? By the way, si Samsung ay 8 megapixel lang. Si Infinix naman ay 16 megapixel yung kanyang camera. Kaya siguro mas sharp siya tingnan dito. Mas maraming details na nakuha sa aking muka. Skin looks sharper here. And overall, mas okay talaga. Seryoso? May ganito pang klaseng quality in 2022? Grabe naman yan. Parang, ah, 
night and day. And even si low light guys, naku, anlayo masyado. It could be the processor, no? Pero most likely, it's the sensor na nilagay dito. Although, para silang 48 megapixel sensor, madali mo lang malaman kung sino talaga mas magandang quality sensor ang inalagay sa phone. Ito naman, I've done a lot of picture comparing camera reviews in the past and uh, ganito klaseng camera in 2022 is not acceptable anymore, no? Especially for the price of 13,000 pesos. Kailangan maganda talaga ang camera if you're paying this much money. And parang ayaw ko na ipagyabang yung 30x zoom ni Infinix, no? Although it does have 30x zoom, it's pretty clear naman kung sino mas okay sa kanilang dalawa. At ito naman yung kanilang night mode side by side. As you can see, layo talaga guys. Wala kaya talaga si Samsung dito. Ah... Uh, and of course, kinompare ko na rin mga videos nila. The Samsung Galaxy A22 can record up to 2K 30 frames per second. Si Infinix 05G naman, kayang umabot sa 4K 30 frames per second. Wala pong 60 frames per second si Samsung. Ito po yung quality na makakuha nyo sa kanilang dalawa. Kaya nila pa mag-judge, no? But I think the Samsung is capable sa video. Okay siya. Pero most applications si Infinix na lang yung mas okay. And of course, meron tayong low-light video test. Ito na pa yung nila. At first glance, para mas okay si Infinix, no? Kasi nga mas bright siya, mas marami kang pwede makita. Kaya lang kasi ang problema, medyo nagiging noisy, medyo nawawala yung sharpness or quality ng video. As you can see, si Samsung naman nare-retain niyo kanyang quality. Kaya lang medyo madilim talaga. Ayun, uh, feeling ko mas usable pa rin si Infinix dahil sa kanyang brightness. But if you still need that quality in low light, you need to edit ng konti si Samsung. Taasan niyo kanyang exposure ng konti sa editor. Pero kung di ka naman nag-edit, no? Agad-agad si Infinix yung uh, pwede may upload agad dito. So, ayan yung comparison ng dalawang phones na to. This was an unfair match. Actually, alam ko na yun eh. Kasi coming in this video, alam ko mas okay talaga to. Mas mura. Mas halimaw ang specs. Well, ang point na lang kasi ng video na to is para malaman nyo na meron talaga mga brands na nag-overprice ka nilang products like si Samsung. Which is, pag hindi nyo alam, parang baka sayang lang sa pera. No? Meron palang mas okay dyan. Mas wax sa mga langan nyo. Actually, the true value of this phone is around 20,000 pesos for the specs it provides. If magkakaroon tayo ng Samsung device na ganito yung specs niya on a Samsung phone, malamas na lamang nasa 20, 21,000 yan. But Infinix decided to say, 11K ka. Gusto ko masaya ka sa 11K mo. Maganda specs, maganda yung camera, at perfect for gaming. Mana all! Ibig sabihin, mahal na mahal ni Infinix ang mga consumers niya. They want to provide the best for you and the best you shall have. Actually, matagal si Infinix sa ating bansa. Before, nag-pull out siya sa Philippines, but he came back. And when he came back, he came back stronger, much more focused, and determined. At alam niyo ba si Infinix ang isa sa mga fast brands growing in 2022? That's right. Baka mag number one pa siya sa ginagawa niya ngayon. Well, I'm just happy na may mga brands na ganito. Para mas marami tayong options, mas panalo ang mga consumers. And if you wanna see more videos just like this, mag-subscribe ka lang, hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great content. About si Bins, and you're watching Unbox Ladies. Hoo-hoo.